Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about noise barrier wall, popular uh, search term on the net. So we're going to try to elaborate a little bit and help you head down the right direction because <laughs> this, this noise thing really has people confused. I get it. I, I think I understand the confusion. Let's see if we can fix a little bit of it here. A barrier. We have noise. Uh, we got a kick drum. Okay, and we're here. We got to build a barrier between the source and the receiver. This is source. This is receiver. This is the critical thing here. We got to measure the noise. We got to quantify and qualify it. We have to get the frequency and the amplitude because everything here goes into here. So we got to get that right. This is a series of layers. And each material inside this wall is frequency and amplitude dependent, right here. The density, the type of material you, we use, the construction methodology, this layer here will be different than this layer here, depending on the energy from the source. That's why we have to measure it, because everything depends on the noise. People say, well, I want to do this, I want to do that. Will it work? What's the frequency and amplitude of the noise? I have no idea if it'll work. I can give you general guidelines, but without knowing the frequency and the amplitude, you're just guessing. And I've said this 100,000 times, guessing with noise is foolish. You'll guess wrong. I've been doing this 45 years and I guess wrong sometimes. What chance do you have? Zero. So we gotta measure, okay? What are we doing when we're measuring? We're looking for minimums and maximum pressures. Let's say one day at 40 hertz, we have like plus 10 dB over baseline in that area. Or let's say, let's even forget about that. Let's say it's 80 hertz, or uh, yeah, let's say it's 80 dB SPL, okay, at 40 hertz on a certain day, all right? That's the highest pressure on that day. So on that day, we have to have a barrier that can handle 80 dB SPL. Maybe the next day it's 85. So the barrier we built at 80 won't work. So that's why we have to have the maximum because if we design and build for the maximums, the minimums fall into place, right? If we build a barrier that can handle 85 dB SPL at 40 cycles, it can also handle 80, it can also handle 75, anything below. It's the above that's the problem. So that's why we have to measure because we want to know the above. We want to know the maximum so we can have everything correct. We have a process. You download our apps on your phone, take the measurements per our instructions, record the data on a data sheet, and then you send it to us. I analyze it, compare it to our database of 270, I don't know, lots, rooms built and measured. And we get you a barrier drawing. We get you a design. Now you can do two things with that drawing. You can build it yourself or you can contract it out. Word of caution. If you're going to contract it out, do not use the word acoustic with a contractor because most contractors freak out when you use that word. They don't know what it means. So they're going to add another 25% to the bid because it's uncertain. They don't know if it's exotic materials. They don't know if it's special construction methods, they don't know. So if they don't know, they're gonna add money into the bid to cover the things that they don't know. Makes sense. Better to know first before you bid on the job, but that's not how life works somehow with contractors, okay? We gotta realize that the noise below 125 cycles is way different in terms of barrier design. If I put two designs here on the board, and said which one is for below 125 and which one is above 125, you'd be able to pick them out immediately because this one below 125 is going to be thicker, denser materials, and different structural arrangements, different construction methodology. You'd see it in a second. We have three walls, noise wall, BTU wall, and treatment wall in a room. Noise wall on the outside, BTU wall here, and treatment wall here. 
When we build rooms, we build three separate walls. We try to put them on three separate foundations if budget will permit. That's the best way. If you can't do it on three, you do it on one, and then you physically separate the structures. Remember, noise is vibrational acoustics, not airborne energy. It's airborne energy when it strikes the wall, from our kick drum example. But once it strikes the wall, it becomes vibrational acoustics. So the barrier has to handle vibration. There's where people, you know, their thinking isn't correct. You got to be careful here. A lot of people confuse the BTU wall with the noise wall. They think that building insulation in the BTU wall that's designed to keep your room warm or cool will stop sound. It will not. It will at some frequencies attenuate, but it won't stop noise transmission. This is an area where people get confused also. You must measure with noise because you don't want to spend one dollar more than you have to. You're never going to get it back. It's structural change. It's built into the room. You leave, it stays. That's just the way it is. So we want to measure first because we don't want to waste money. We want to save our money for the treatment side of it. That's what we hear. Inside the room, we hear the absorption and the diffusion to match our usage. We don't want any noise, obviously right here's a measure once cut twice that's what people do it's not how you do it measure twice cut once because here's the thing with noise you make a mistake you don't measure and you say well i think i'll i'll build this really why that's my question i always ask the people when they tell me what they're going to do if they hesitate or pause or give me some answer that makes no sense, I have to tell them. I have to say, that's not going to work. Well, what will work? Well, what's the frequency and amplitude of noise? Without that, you just can't know. You can't guess. You'll guess wrong. And here's the problem. You guess wrong, you got to tear it out most of the time and start over. So it's no fun. It'll drain your bank account, get you poor performance and frustrate the hell out of you. Noise is a pain. Get it right. Measure twice, cut once. Get it 100% fixed and 100% right. And then be done with it. Let's move on to the fun stuff, the absorption and the diffusion inside the room. Because that you can actually paint pictures with, if you will. You can control the, the, the psychoacoustics of the room with proper rates and levels of absorption, and proper frequency response of diffusers. There's all kinds of great things you can do inside the room, but the shell, which deals with noise, we have to get right at the beginning. Noise barrier wall. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.